If you give the planaria egg yolk, they gather round and eat like this. But the mouth of the planaria is not located at its head. Then, where is the planaria's mouth? Today, we're going to talk about planaria. Planaria is a flatworm. It is characterized by having a flat body. The size of the body is usually about one inch. They use the cilia of the ventral surface to move, or they move by contracting and relaxing their body muscles. Also, they swim in the water like this. And if you look at the head, you can find two eye spots. Planaria senses light with this eye spots and moves in a direction and avoids it. If you experiment them with a simple shade, you can see them moving into the dark. And if you move the shade, you get the same result. Because of their light-hating nature, they can be found mostly under stones in clean streams. Planaria has two sensory lobes around its head. It detects chemicals through them and finds food. Planaria feeds on small insects and dead animals. And egg yolk is also favored food. So, if you give the yolk, they gather like this and eat deliciously. But isn't it a little unique to see them eating food? That's because planaria's mouth is located in the middle of body, not on the head. This party is the pharynx of the planaria, so the food enters through the belly side of the mouth, passes through the pharynx, and spreads all over the body. There's no anus, so excrement is also discharged through the mouth. Planaria has a digestive system, but the circulatory and the respiratory system are not well developed. This is a characteristic related to the flattened body of flatworms. Most animal cells cannot come into contact with the external environment directly. So they need a circulatory and a respiratory system to transport oxygen and nutrients to the cells inside of their body. But flat-bodied planarias almost every cell is exposed to the external environment. Because most of the cells can exchange substances directly with the external environment. They don't need circulatory and respiratory systems to be developed. Isn't it amazing? But the most amazing thing about planaria is its incredible ability to regenerate. Now, I'm going to show you how planaria regenerates. First, move the planaria to the slide glass and remove the water. Then cut the planaria into three pieces and put the cut planaria back in the water and wait. Among the cuts, you can see that the head's movement is the most active. I observe the change every day. From day two, the cut piece's movement began to increase. On the second or fourth day, I could see the transparent part of the cut area gradually widen. On the sixth day, I spot began to generate to form a shape of head, and the tail began to grow. In the middle part, both head and a tail formed. Isn't it amazing? From day 7, three planarias were swimming freely. According to research, even if the planaria is cut into 1 279th, it was regenerated as complete individuals in just two weeks. That's because 30% of the planaria's body cells are made up of adult stem cells, called neoblast. Planaria can regenerate itself by forming a transparent layer of cells made up of neoblast in the damaged area. Because neoblast cells can differentiation into any cell. So wherever the wound is, it can be regenerated through the cells and recovered as a complete individual. Isn't it amazing? Planaria uses great regenerate ability by cutting off the tip of their own tail and has asexual reproduction to become two. Because planaria is a hermaphrodite, it has both female and male gonads. So it also does sexual reproduction through mating. So they are creatures that do both asexual and sexual reproduction. This is the end of the planaria. Unfortunately, I don't have anything for Sebastian today. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe.